afternoon, everyone. Uh, so um, uh, I'm Angela and I'm a forecaster at the Portuguese Meteorological Service. Here, here is my photo and a photo of me and uh, my colleague Bruno. And uh, he will present um, also this weather briefing uh, today. Uh, so this the first part uh, will be um, about the current weather situation as uh, usually is in Europe and later Bruno will show some information about recent events. So I hope uh, everyone is um, listening uh, loud and clear. Uh, Let's start this morning with this uh, water vapor image at 300 hectopascal with um, model fills, so um, winds and geopotential. So it shows here an extensive ridge over Azores uh, towards uh, British Isles. And on the western side of uh, the ridge, uh, there is a trough with high amounts of humidity um, in the warm side of the jet stream. And there, it's this humidity, this moisture is moving uh, towards northeast. On the eastern part of this ridge, uh, another trough of uh, France, Iberia and Western uh, Mediterranean is moving slowly eastward. This trough um, has already a cyclonic circulation around uh, the pressure minimum at higher levels. Could be an upper level low um, that is forming during uh, the cutoff process. Uh, this area is already active today and uh, it will continue tomorrow. Uh, still over the Atlantic, a very dry area uh, south of Azores, uh, which has uh, also a low pressure minimum at 300 hectopascal. This is an upper level low. Uh, I will show you later what it looks like at uh, surface. Uh, so further east uh, is possible um, to see another upper level ridge uh, over Greece towards northeast. Um, and in fact, in fact, uh, over Greece yesterday, uh, there was some convection um, associated to a low pressure system at the surface beneath a trough that today already moved east. So, this is a good way to start as we can have a hint uh, at the upper air dynamics, but let's add uh, the air mass RGB that will give more information about the upper air dynamics and here we have also the mean sea level pressure. So, the Azores high, uh, you can see is located in central Atlantic with some some warm air mass, so you can see some greenish colors and the fr frontal systems in the west, uh, you can see the whitish colors, so very thick clouds with lots of moisture. Um, they are in the west and are moving around this high pressure system. These uh, frontal systems are affecting uh, British Isles and Iceland. You can see a cold front that is crossing um, the Ireland and uh, Scotland uh, at this uh, moment and um, is uh, the occlusion is uh, near Iceland. So the, there is another frontal system uh, in east, east of uh, northeast of uh, Newfoundland that will move further uh, east and will affect again later tonight and tomorrow this northwestern part of uh, Europe. Uh, over western uh, and southern Europe, you can see a, a, a low pressure system uh, is uh, and it is showing lots of activity with stratospheric air intrusions and uh, lots of cloud, uh, convective cloudiness. Uh, this low pressure is uh, Dorothea and uh, the storm that was named by the Italian Meteorological Service yesterday. Also, you can see the pressure gradient over France and Iberia uh, that is, uh, was yesterday, but still today is generating high winds over these regions, um, mainly Biscay Bay and west of Iberia, and of course, uh, also high seas. 
Uh, and further east, uh, a little, uh, very small low uh, that you can see with brownish color. Um, so this is the low that uh, affected Greece uh, yesterday, and it's now further, uh, further east. So at surface levels with uh, this both night microphysics and natural color RGBs, it's possible to see uh, the thick cloudiness associated to the front of systems over the Atlantic. That's this, this reddish color and very thick uh, cloudiness. There, there's, these frontal systems are moving north and then northeast and uh, affecting, affecting uh, mainly Iceland and the British Isles. Um, you can see the uh, air um, behind the frontal system now some uh, small uh, cumulus clouds but with some kind of um, thickness you know, just active cumulus clouds with uh, some showers and um, but but further south uh, you can see uh, between Azores and uh, Madeira, Madeira so this uh, pinkish clouds it's uh, low level clouds and um, are some stratocumulus sheets associated to the high pressure um, high pressure system so they are low level water clouds and also there are some uh, low level water clouds uh, this whitish greenish colors over Denmark, Germany, France, for example, and uh, maybe with some with some fog patches. So very clear the position of the ridge between the two low level um, low level uh, depressions, one uh, near Iceland and the other near um, over the Western Mediterranean. So the low pressure system or um, on Western Mediterranean is not well seen with the separation of the two RGBs, but the thick convective cloudiness is well seen both in night microphysics and natural color. Um, further east with clear skies, it's possible to see snow on the ground. Uh, so this uh, CN clock, uh, color, like uh, greenish blue color and also some low level uh, clouds uh, over black sea so the whitish very whitish colors that you can see uh, over black sea are low level uh, water clouds or even uh, some fog so uh, about uh, Duratia, uh, this is, image is from uh, this is the infrared 10.8 yesterday, and I want to show where is uh, Duratia or where it was yesterday. So this low level pressure system has more or less two centers, and uh, there is one in France. Uh, in the middle of France, and Duratia is the one at south. Um, the one at, it's more or less near, uh, so Northeast Spain and Balearic Islands. So it, it, it was a, a cyclogenesis there. So the, 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 in France, uh, the, the one in over France is dissipating and, uh, or was absorbed by Dorothea. So this is was this was yesterday, and uh, still yesterday at nine uh, UTC, uh, twenty twenty one UTC, and during this um, during past night, and so today um, is at at six UTC. You can see Dorothea become a very active low pressure system with a lot of convection. Uh, you can can very well see the. The stratospheric intrusion with PV, PVA anomalies, and there has been almost stationary. So this is a problem in terms of rainfall amounts. Uh, on the left side, you can see some lightning activity uh, this morning, and uh, also on the right side, you can see the convective rainfall rate from the south now cast, and um, it shows. In fact, that uh, there are potential um, for developing storms um, over the sea that uh, reaches the, the land and even in overland. So a very active area and uh, in the next hours. So already this morning, Italian Met Service named another storm. 
Um, this is a forecast for later today. So uh, it's zero UTC and shows Emil Kist of Tunisia. So it is a cyclogenesis on the lee of the Atlas, um, Atlas Mountains that will be moving towards uh, the south. Now, moving uh, again over the Atlantic, uh, as I mentioned in the first slide, there was an upper level trough south of Azores uh, with a marked dry area. Uh, so uh, let's uh, see what it looks like at surface. And I have here the cloud phase RGB, so uh, the new, uh, the future uh, uh, RGB that we will have in, uh, with uh, uh, FCI sensor on MTG. So this is only a, a proxy image uh, of uh, ABI from Goes East, and uh, this new RGB uh, will be. Um, as I said, uh, available in the future and the recipe, you can see it in the upper right corner. The new channel that we don't have with MSG is the 2.2 and here is assigned to the green beam. Uh, this channel, uh, the two, uh, near infrared 2.2 is very good at discriminating cloud particle size. So, um, in this RGB, we have also the near infrared 1.6, which is very good at discriminating cloud phase. So both here uh, will help discriminate between ice water particles and large and uh, large small uh, particles. So near Azores, you can see um, some magenta colors south of Azores and some white. Um, white yellowish colors of. Um, uh, over Azores. So, what are these uh, clouds? Uh, so, these clouds are water, uh, low level clouds, and you can discriminate here between the large droplets, which are more magenta, and the small droplets, which are uh, this kind of yellowish, whitish uh, uh, colors. So, it's very interesting that um, this, this this kind of discrimination uh, in, in, in some way can help us to, um, uh, to know where are the areas with more chances of rain and um, with, with the, uh, these magenta colors and this discrimination. So you can see the white line is more or less the cold front that crossed the Atlantic on the 25th of February and moved south and the upper level low that we saw in the first slide is more or less in that position. So, no, um, we have a, a high pressure system in this area, lots of subsidence, and we don't have here um, mid level clouds and uh, high level clouds. And besides all the activity that Dorothy, uh, Dorothea uh, is bringing to Mediterranean, uh, it's possible also to see some dust uh, north of Sicily uh, today at 7.30 UTC. And uh, in fact, the forecast for tomorrow is of high values of dust, uh, dust AOD, so uh, aerosol optical depth, uh, and uh, also with this, the help of the storm Emil. So, uh, last but not least, this was an overview of what is happening um, over Europe today, but uh, of course, the, the low pressure system um, in the Western Mediterranean is uh, really uh, um, important for today. Uh, so, this is a, an overview of weather warnings uh, for uh, today, and most of the warnings are for, for Spain, France and Italy, and some in the Adriatic Sea, mainly for wind. So tomorrow, the weather in Iberia is improving, at least the western part, uh, but still severe weather in France and Western Mediterranean. So stay safe if you are in these areas. And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I will give now the floors to Bruno, my colleague. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is, is Bruno. I work with Angela as a forecaster in, um, uh, in IPNA. And, uh, okay. 
And um, today I will start to talk a, a little bit about a coastal event that affected the western coast of Europe. So we had a somewhat stationary uh, high pressure uh, near uh, Azores. Uh, let me just point you the cursor. So in, in this part and uh, a low pressure near Iceland. And um, this had, it was a situation that stayed like for, for some, some days and it originated a large fetch area where the wind blowed predominantly from west to north, uh, west, northwest uh, and at near constant speed. And it generated waves over the Atlantic that uh, propagated over to the western shores of Europe, uh, namely Portugal, Spain, France, and the British Isles uh, were affected by by these uh, by these waves. Uh, we had a red warning uh, issued for various parts of these regions with uh, forecasts of uh, significant wave height higher than uh, seven meters. And then in the next slide, we'll look at uh, some scatterometer and altimeter data related to this event. Um, this data usually helps us to validate winds and waves over the ocean and gives us a, a mean to, to also evaluate the information that the models are providing us uh, over those areas and thus uh, if the model is uh, well behaving. Uh, so on the, um, on the 23rd at 23 UTC, we had an uh, ascending path of the satellite Sentinel-6A and it gave us information uh, for a good match between observation and model outputs, uh, as you can see here, because on, on the left we have the, the, the swath of the Sentinel going uh, from south to, to north, um, picking the, 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 the information along its, its swath. And then here we have the, um, the, um, the, the comparison between the, the observation and, uh, and the model, the observation at blue uh, and the model with red and we had up to 10 meters of significant wave height forecasted by the model uh, and very similar to the acquired data by the, the Sentinel-6A for the same place at the nearest time. About uh, 13 hours after we had a descending pass of the uh, another satellite, a satellite Sentinel-3B uh, and that information was also important as some of the observation data, as you can see here was uh, above the model outputs uh, pointing out that waves higher than the model forecasted uh, could be hitting the, the, the coast um, up to around seven meters of significant wave height forecasted by the model, lower than the acquired data from Sentinel-3B uh, at some places. As you can see here, some, some waves uh, observed uh, surpassing uh, eight meters. Uh, looking um, at the wind over the ocean in the fetch area uh, on the 22nd uh, at 11 UTC, the scatterometer ASCAP B detected winds stronger than 40 knots and reaching even 50 knots uh, and uh, other scatterometer observations around that day confirmed the high intensity winds around that uh, big fetch area. So the forecast uh, days, uh, uh, some days earlier, were, were pointing to waves with seven to eight meters in the western coast of Portugal, and the, the buoys registered values uh, up to around nine meters in, in, in that region. Um, so, looking at, um, at, an, uh, at also this month, uh, uh, a dust storm over the, the Canary Islands, here you can see the, the dust aerosol product from Copernicus. Uh, through the EC charts of the SMWF with high values over the desert and, uh, and the vecting uh, over the Canary Islands on the 18th of September, uh, February, sorry. Um, and uh, here we can look at uh, four, uh, uh, three RGBs, the natural color RGB, the dust and the HRV RGB and uh, during the day. And in all of them, it's visible the, the dust cloud over the ocean uh, and over the, the Canary Islands uh, at this time of day, like 16, 15 UTC. It's, it's uh, visible through these images. 
using the, the HRV RGB and the natural color RGB during the day provides a, a big contrast between the dust clouds and the sea uh, due to the higher reflectively reflectivity of the dust particles in comparison to the sea surface. And using the dust RGB, um, we can see the dust in magenta colors. Uh, so with high, con high contribution of the, the blue and the, and the red um, bands, uh, the, B, the, the blue contribution is high for warm and low callouts like dust. And the, the, R, the red contribution is also high uh, because the long wave radiation from the Earth surface is stronger absorbed by a, a dust layer at 10.8 micrometers than at 12 uh, micrometers, and uh, because the, the brightness temperature brightness temperature difference um, uh, in the green is in the green band uh, is rather small for aerosols like dust. The, this results in a, a low contribution of the green band, and so the magenta final color uh, for the dust is obtained. Um, uh, dust color appears even better on the, on the natural color RGB near dusk and dawn, as you can see on, on the left. Um, in this case, the, the, uh, the dust time was around 19 UTC, and uh, you can see a large area uh, of dust over the ocean mixed with some, some low clouds. And um, and and these these better uh, better um, better obtained uh, uh, visualization of the of the dust uh, is due to the position of the, the satellite relative to to the sun. The angle between them becomes wider at, at this time uh, of day, and therefore miscattering is detected by the bands of the natural color RGB. And you can see that uh, increase in dust detection. Uh, on the right side, we can see the magenta color um, over the desert and spreading to the Atlantic Ocean with the highest concentrations of, of, of dust uh, south from the, the archipelago of, um, uh, of the Canary Islands. Uh, True color images, uh, in this case from Sentinel-3, um, can also brilliantly capture the event during daytime, especially over water, as you can see here. It's a, a beautiful image obtained for this uh, event. And uh, here you can also see the effect of the dust cloud appearing better near the dusk as when you, when you compare the, the 13 UTC and the, and the 18 UTC uh, RGB uh, HRV. Um, and uh, this HRV has just a better a better resolution, higher resolution than the natural RGB also. Uh, on the 19th, uh, the, this was uh, a special importance because the, the dust was less concentrated, harder to detect than the previous day, the 18, as we seen earlier. And um, on the right side, we have some, some photos. You can see some photos from this day that were kindly provided by meteorologist Cesar Alejandre from AMET, uh, where it's obvious the dust in the air and, uh, and and at low altitudes also. Um, also this month, another event was like a snow event. We had a crossing of a cold surface during the 22nd and another cold surface uh, crossing on the 25th to the, to the 26th of February. It led to so snowfall in several places of Europe, especially in uh, the Iberian Peninsula, France and the Alps and Portugal uh, experienced uh, an unusual snowfall event uh, with uh, like quantities uh, around 30 centimeters in, in three days in some places. Uh, looking at this uh, isolated channel, the, the Vs 0 0.6, uh, here we have dark, darker pixels, uh, um, black or gray, uh, representing the sea, uh, the land and um, or transparent clouds and brighter pixels white uh, are associated with uh, optical thick clouds and, and snow covered land. Uh, on Viz 0.6 there is a low contrast between green and non green areas and and vegetation appears with darker pixels um, and giving a good contrast between the clouds, the snow and ice. Uh, 
uh, with brighter brighter values. So snow covered areas here can be mistaken for thick clouds and vice versa. Uh, looking at uh, these 0 0.8, this is also uh, an isolated channel here, and the main difference comparing it with the, the previous one, the VIS 0 0.6, is that the VIS 0 0.8 has lighter shades for land and vegetation, which are dark gray in the 0 0.6 and light gray on the 0 0.8. Um, and, um, and the VIS 0 0.8 is uh, especially sensitive to the green color with nice contrast between green and non-green areas. Uh, you can see here some, some of that, the contrast between the lakes and the green areas. And um, if vegetation is photosynthetically active, then it reflects the solar radiation at this wavelength. And we have these brighter pixels, so the clearer images compared to the 0 0.6. Uh, this is the isolated channel for New Year infrared 1.6, and the main difference is comparing it with the two other V channel, these channels we, we, we saw before is uh, the difference in reflectance between snow and water clouds in this case, uh, uh, which is very large, large in the New Year infrared 1.6. So snow appears, uh, with darker pixels. Here you can look here the difference in the Alps and you can see clearly the snow. Uh, this channel uh, can also be used to distinguish between uh, ice and water phase clouds with the ice clouds usually having a low reflectivity and water clouds having high reflectivity. So ice clouds are usually darker than uh, water clouds. Uh, why usually? Because uh, ice clouds with very small ice crystals may be as bright as water clouds, and water clouds with very large droplets may be as dark as ice clouds. Um, in this image, uh, we can see the difference between water clouds, uh, whitish, uh, and um, and uh, the the ice clouds more more gray, as you can see here. And this is a, a great contrast between with the with the Viz 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 channels where they are all white. Uh, looking here now at the natural color RGB can help us detect a sort of snow on the ground during the day. And this RGB combines the previous channels um, we seen and takes the best advantages of their differences and similarities and to identify snow covered areas. Uh, usually um, Ice clouds uh, and snow appear in cyan uh, with lower reflectance in the near infrared 1.6 and I in the VIS channels, uh, green and, and blue bands. Uh, and, you, and you can see it especially in the north of the peninsula and, uh, and, uh, and south of France. This. The, the snow covered land can vary in the color of shade, depending the of the compactness of the snow and extended snow fields on mountain tops will show brighter cyan color as seen here in the Alps um, than, than if you compare it with snow covering urban areas or forests. Um, the infrared 3.9 has a reflective part of the solar radiation at, at 3.9 micrometers and its reflectivity is dependent of cloud phase and particle size. Uh, regarding cloud phase, water droplets reflect more solar radiation than ice crystals. And uh, regarding particle size, large particles reflect uh, less solar radiation than small particles. And this is similar to the near infrared 1.6. Uh, in this image of the 3.9, Brighter pixels are associated with snow cover lands and ice clouds, and as, as you can see here, and uh, you can see the same clouds as before. So uh, the, the snow in the Alps have uh, lighter pixels, and then we have darker pixels that are associated with water clouds. And uh, here you can see clearly a, a patch of clouds that uh, on the other um, on the other channels were. Uh, lighter and here there they are very dark here western of west of uh, Portugal.
The SNOW RGB is a combination of uh, of, of channels uh, tweaked with to get some uh, the suitable RGB for SNOW detection, and uh, this RGB combines the, the previous channels, the V0.8, the near infrared 1.6, and the infrared 3.9, the, the, the reflectivity part. Um, orange and red colors are associated to snow covered land and to ice clouds. For snow, the reflectivity is high in the Vs 0.8, low in the near infrared 1.6, as seen before, and very low in the infrared 3.9, the, the solar part. So we, we obtain these red to orange colors. And again, we see the Alps snow and the clouds over the north of the peninsula and mainly south of France uh, with, this, with these colors. And we can also see again the low water clouds in in CN, so the green band and the, and the blue band uh, with major contribution west of Portugal. Uh, the RGV, the RG, uh, HRV is a visible channel with a better resolution, spatial resolution uh, around one kilometer. Uh, and apart from that, is uh, is very similar in characteristics to the other these channels. So white for snow clouds, uh, uh, gray for land and green, green parts, and dark for um, bodies of water. Uh, this channel, the, the, the infrared 10.8, uh, is sensitive to surface and cloud top temperatures, and because it's inverted in this image, as used with the, in the HRV10, uh, RGB, cold temperatures have higher values and appear brighter and warm temperatures, um, warm temperatures have uh, lower values uh, and appear darker. Uh, so here darker pixels are associated to warm clouds. You can also see the, the clouds west from Portugal. Um, uh, warm land also with the darker pixels and warm sea. And the brighter pixels are associated with the cloud tops, cloud, cold clouds, sorry, or cold surfaces. Um, the HRV clouds RGB is the combination of the two channels, HRV and 10.8 in three bands. So two with the HRV and one with the 10.8 inverted. Um, the use of, of the HRV channel in both the, the red and green band strengthens the better resolution in this uh, RGB combination. So, in association with the previous RGB combinations, we can use the HRV clouds RGB better resolution to evaluate some of the expansion and other nearby areas covered with the snow. Uh, the white colors are associated with, with um, cold clouds with strong signal in all bands, uh, and the yellow are associated with, with uh, warm clouds, so the strong signal in the red and green, and the weak signal in the uh, blue bands. Uh, darker pixels are associated to thin clouds, but very dependent on the surface below, and, uh, and brighter pixels are associated to thick clouds and to snow-covered land. Uh, so it is easier to distinguish between ice clouds and snow. Um, ultimately, uh, yeah, you need a clear sky to see the extent of the snowfall accumulation that happened in these days uh, and to see it through the satellite imagery. Uh, in this event, the days after were still very cloudy and, and the part of the areas where there was uh, major snow accumulation were not clearly visible. So uh, it was a little bit difficult to, to, to grab some good images for this event. Um, to finish, I will leave here a photo taken in the this 24th uh, of February at Ordino Arcalis Ski Resort in Andorra, uh, where you can see the intricate halo phenomena produced by the reflection and re refraction of light by the ice crystals in the atmosphere uh, with the clear periodic circles and dots and solar halo, among other uh, effects here in this photo. So uh, a nice moment and curiously witnessed by a group of meteorologists at the Andorra weather meeting 2024. Thank you very much. Next weather briefing will be held on the 20th of March.